In this video, I'm going to talk about why the Vikings were such physical specimens, why they were so strong and successful for the few hundred years where they basically ruled Northern Europe. First, let's talk about genetics. So Scandinavia is a very cold climate and larger bodies tend to be favored in cold climates because they have a smaller surface area to volume ratio, which means that the body retains heat better. So larger bodies in cold climates like Scandinavia are favored because you can stay warmer. This is one reason why the Vikings tended to have larger bodies and mass moves mass. So a larger body is generally a stronger body. Northern Europeans and other people from colder climates tend to be taller and heavier than people in hot climates like Southeast Asia. So over generations of living in a cold climate, large bodies are selected for. They are favored evolutionarily because those people with larger bodies and slightly more fat stores are more likely to survive in a cold climate. Another crucial reason why they could be so large and strong is they had a very varied diet. So they would eat lots of fish, uh, meat, milk, crops like rye and barley, vegetables, fruits and nuts, lots of different foods. And a varied diet leads to bigger bodies and better health than farming cultures like the rest of Europe had. These other farmers, they would get most of their calories from the few staple crops they grew like wheat and barley and that kind of thing. And limited uh, variability in their diet, which meant that they often had mineral or vitamin deficiencies because they weren't getting micronutrients from other sources like animals or fruits. Vikings ate all of these different things, fish, meat, milk, crops, vegetables, fruit and nuts. So they basically had all of their micronutrients covered, which is obviously amazing for health. And that's going to allow you to have a more like robust body, stronger body and grow larger. From this diet with a lot of fish, meat and dairy, the Vikings had a diet that was high in protein and fat and animal protein from meat or eggs or milk is one of the major determining factors of height. So a child who eats a lot of meat, uh, fish, eggs and milk in childhood will grow much taller than the same child who had been fed a diet of like bread and other vegetables because animal protein directly impacts height and having a high protein and high fat diet also means these vikings are going to be higher in testosterone which is going to boost muscle mass and bone density so they're going to be bigger, stronger, more robust. Now, it's pretty hard to get strong without doing some kind of exercise, without moving your body in some way. And the Vikings did a lot of this, obviously. The boys were trained and helped out with physical tasks from a young age. Everyday life for a Viking would have involved stuff like building ships, which would have required chopping wood and carrying heavy logs, that kind of thing. They could be rowing long boats, uh, lots of walking everywhere, farming, carrying and using heavy equipment like swords and axes, hunting, frequent combat training like swinging swords and axes and drawing bows. All of this means they're using their body basically every day getting strong, swinging things, picking things up, carrying them around, doing cardio like walking and rowing. That's a lot of physical activity and you're going to develop really good cardio and strength from doing that. And they had a good diet to fuel all that activity and build the muscle and strength that they would have built from that. Another interesting part of Viking culture is lifting stones. So Vikings would lift heavy stones to prove their strength. In Iceland, Stone lifting would be used to qualify men for working on fishing boats. So if you wanted to work on a fishing boat, you had to be able to lift a stone weighing at least 54 kilos or 119 pounds. And if you could lift this stone, you would be considered a weakling. A man who could lift a 100 kilogram or 220 pound stone was considered half strength. And a man who could lift a 154 kilogram or 340 pound stone was considered full strength. Not many men today could lift those kind of weights like a 340 pound deadlift most men could not do to be able to lift a oddly shaped stone off the ground and pick it up weighing 154 kilos that is a pretty impressive feat of strength for even men nowadays with all our modern health care and technology so most modern men would be dwarfed by these full strength vikings and these standards were just for fishing boats a raider would likely have to be just as strong plus display things like combat prowess and the bravery required to go and raid villages and kill their enemies so there were much higher physical standards back then than there are nowadays Another important part is hygiene. 
So Vikings, despite the common stereotypes, they actually had pretty good hygiene compared to most other Europeans. The Vikings bathed at least once a week, generally on Saturday, which meant that they were less susceptible to disease than other populations which had poorer hygiene. Poor hygiene could obviously cause disease, uh, which is especially detrimental in childhood. If the child gets a disease while it's still young, that can seriously stunt their growth and development. And obviously they're not then going to grow to be as big and strong as they could have been. So having good hygiene and preventing disease would allow the Vikings to grow to their full potential. And combine good hygiene with a varied and high protein diet, rigorous exercise and good genes, these Viking boys could then grow up into strong warrior men. Another very important part of why the Vikings were so strong and successful was their mindset. The Vikings believed that a warrior who died during battle would go to Valhalla, which was basically heaven, and there they could fight and feast for all eternity until Odin called them to fight for him during Ragnarok. And this belief that they would go to heaven if they died in battle would obviously encourage fearlessness and some recklessness. When a person is put into a desperate situation like that, like a hopeless battle situation, they unlock some kind of superhuman abilities in their like desperation to survive and be victorious. And if you combine this with the fact that the Vikings often took mushrooms to send them into a kind of berserker rage where they felt that they were possessed by the spirit of like a wolf, this obviously makes them into an extremely dangerous opponent where they kind of have no regard for their own life and they just go on like a murderous rampage through the battlefield. But the main thing I want you to get from this, the mindset, section is that you need a really good reason for you to perform you need some like very strong motivation behind why you're doing something and you also need to be able to fully commit and kind of charge straight into battle so to speak a lot of us today spend way too much time just like thinking and hesitating and wanting to do something but never charging ahead at the target at the opponent the enemy and you need that like intensity in order to really be successful you're never going to make it by half-assing things so just to recap everything in this video they lived in a harsh environment, a cold environment that uh, genetically favored like larger bodies, stronger bodies. They had a nice varied diet that was high in protein and fat and they had lots of uh, fruit and vegetables and meat, dairy, fish. All of their micronutrients were covered. They had plenty of protein and fat for muscle building and testosterone. They did a lot of physical activity like fighting, carrying things, building boats, rowing lifting stones. They had good hygiene, which would have prevented disease. Obviously disease weakens you. And they also had a mindset that if they died in battle, they would go to Valhalla, which basically encouraged them to go out in a blaze of glory and to fight with maximum intensity in order to either be victorious or to die and be taken to Valhalla by the Valkyries. These are all important lessons that we can apply to our life. We need like a harsh environment to push us out of our comfort zone and kind of force us to adapt to difficult situations. We need a varied diet that is high in protein and fat and has all our micronutrients that we need. We need lots of physical activity, including combat training, carrying things, really good cardio, lifting heavy weights. We need to stay healthy, have good hygiene, avoid illness and disease as much as we can. A big part of which is just having a good diet and exercising. And lastly, the mindset you need to have. Most people are too timid. They hesitate too much. They spend too much time thinking instead of acting. You need to make a plan and then execute on it with fearlessness and intensity and consistency. Even if the plan isn't perfect, if you just go in there consistently and put that intense effort in, you're going to make much more progress than the guy who's sitting there trying to come up with the perfect plan. If you've seen my video on Toji's physique and you're interested in the complete guide to achieving Toji Fushiguro's physique, including a physique analysis and weightlifting or calisthenics training programs tailored to suit your needs and efficiently maximize muscle growth, check out the link at the top of the description. I hope this video was useful or interesting. Let me know if there are other kind of warrior cultures you'd like to see me analyze. I'll probably do one on the samurai. But until then, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.